So Jesus goes out and he explains for them this. He says, you guys didn't believe because you're not my sheep. And then he goes on to explain who his sheep are and what happens to his sheep. So I thought we'd have a look at that today. Who are Jesus' sheep? Verse 27, he says very succinctly, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Simples. My sheep listen. Listen is an active, continuous verb, isn't it? It's an active verb because listen is something you do. When you shout at a teenager, do your homework, what happens? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not to go there. Not no. much happens, does it, really? Because they've heard you, but it just went straight through because they weren't listening. Now, if you shout, dinner's ready, totally different ball game, isn't it? Because they're running down the stairs because they heard that one and they wanted to hear what you were saying and it went in and it stayed in and it produced action. They actively listened. And Jesus says that my sheep are the people who actively listen to what I'm saying to them. You guys didn't get this debate and you didn't get all these signs and all these things that I went around doing, you didn't get it because you weren't actually listening and looking for what was going on. You were just letting it pass over. It's continuous. They listen in that this is a general trait that they do. This isn't something that they did and they stopped doing and they'll start doing again later. This is just what they're like. They listen. Now, <coughs> I've spoken to many people who think that to hear the voice of God, you've got to have voices in your head. You know, ones that talk. That's not how we listen to God. Every time. It can happen. But there are easier ways. There are simpler ways, more common ways. More primary ways. We have heard what God has had to say. We've had it in front of us. He's written it down in a nice book that we can go and buy very cheaply and read in plain English, where God has said everything he wanted to say to humanity for thousands of years, and it's all there. What he said through the prophets to the people a long time ago, what he said through his son, and what he says to us today. We're going to be people who listen. We're going to be people who want to hear. We've got to be the kind of people who pray and expect God to be talking back. Tom Jones said, the great theologian Tom Jones said, with a, I've got to get this right now, with a word or a sign, with the ringing of the bell in the back of my mind, my Lord did trouble me. It's a great description of like the many ways that God can talk to us, through his word, through signs, through the ringing of the bell in the back of his head, God's got something to say, if we want to listen. We need to be people who listen. We need to be people who are known. This is really easy, because who's doing the knowing? God's doing the knowing. And how much does God know about me? Everything. God knew how many hairs I'm going to have on my head when I'm 16 before Adam had a single hair on his head. God knows all about me. Now, I read this first in my Croatian Bible, because that's my habit, and the word for know in Croatian that they use here is poznat. Okay? Now, we've all heard about Steve Jobs this last week. Now, I know Steve Jobs. I know he was the guy who ran Apple for a long time, and he did... Lots of things, invented the iPad and everything. And I know him. But I don't Poznat Njega. I don't know him because I never met him and shook his hand. And we never sat and had a cup of tea together and a chat. It's different kind of getting to know. It's not that God doesn't know enough information about us. It's that 
we haven't shared. We don't like people knowing lots of stuff about us. There are some bits of us that we don't want people to know. And that's why we go on Facebook with pseudonyms. I know lots of teachers who go on Facebook and they've got Facebook accounts but it's not in their name because they don't want the kids to know what's going on with them, understandably. Whereas God said, I know them. He's doing the action, but we're letting it happen. The building of a relationship to be known by Jesus. And then they follow me. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? And for the disciples, it really was simple. Jesus said, Oh, I'm going to Galilee today, boys. Come on. And Jesus went to Galilee, and everyone else went to Galilee with him. He said, We're going to Jerusalem. They went to Jerusalem with him. Following was really easy. They were just duckies walking around. But the problem is, we don't have a Jesus to physically follow anymore. So following's become more complicated, hasn't it? Over the course of history. What have we got that we can follow from Jesus? We can follow his example, can we? We've got four separate and very comprehensive accounts of what Jesus was like, what he did, and the way he dealt with situations that we can then take and apply to ourselves as we seek to be more like that in our situations. We have his teaching, we have his clear instructions. The Sermon on the Mount is nothing if it's not a big instruction on the way that life is best lived. We can follow Jesus, but following is also an active, continuous verb, isn't it? They follow me. They actively change direction based on where I'm leading. When I sent those sheep back along that path, believe it or not, they didn't want to walk straight back along that path. They wanted to go this way, they wanted to go that way, they wanted to go the other way. They needed to keep following the lead. Keep taking the direction. Keep changing back to where we're supposed to be.